Hi everyone, and welcome back to our FPS RPG series. We're in chapter 3, working on our inventory system. Previously, we set up the inventory component, the user interface, and also started adding items to an item database. What we're doing now is tying the UI to our inventory component, so we can start seeing the contents of it there. So, let's find ourselves into our inventory slot UI widget, which we made previously. And in here, we're going to go to the graph and add a new variable. And this will be called slot contents. And we're going to change the variable type for this to match the slot struct. Make sure you tick instance editable and expose on spawn as true. Hit compile and that's it. We can close this and then go into that inventory grid. On the inventory grid, go to the graph and you'll find your for loop where you create these slots. Right click on this and choose refresh nodes. You should now see the slot contents appear as a pin. The slot contents is going to come from our inventory, which is going to belong to our player characters component. So for that, we've got the inventory component already here. So from there, we're going to get the inventory array. And then from that, we're going to get a copy and the integer is going to come from this for loop that we already have so drag that into the index there and then plug in the contents from that get hit compile and then save so let's just test this out and see how this looks so I'll put walk through here Let's add it to inventory, push enter, go to inventory graph here, and hey, it's not showing. Now the reason why it's not showing is because although the slot has that data, we haven't told it to actually do anything with it. So it's just sitting there. So what we need to do on the pre-construct or the construct, totally up to you, we're going to do it on the construct. And we're going to drag that slot contents out, which is get, and then split it. And then split it again. So now we've got the thumbnail, let's connect that to our item thumbnail image to so get that out and then set brush as uh, from texture. Plug that all into construct and the texture will come from the thumbnail in the item details. Hit compile. So now let's test that out. Walk over to the object, pick it up and go to inventory. And there you go, there's our first item in our inventory slot. Now we don't have quantity currently on there, so let's add quantity to this. So go to your slot UI, and we're going to add some text to this. Now we want it to overlay on top of this thing. So on your item thumbnail, right click on this, wrap with overlay. Now overlay by default is going to st stick the item thumbnail in the top left hand corner. You want it to stretch the whole entire thing. So click on item thumbnail and then choose the stretch horizontally aligned fill and vertically aligned fill. In that same overlay, we're going to add a text into it. On that text, we're going to drag that to the top right. So using horizontal alignment and vertical alignment, put it into the top right, and then scroll down and you'll find justification for text to be on the right as well. Tick that. And now we can change whatever value we want. Now, for testing purposes, I can't really see whether or not this is behind or in front of the thumbnail. So, temporarily, let's change the colour. So, currently it's sitting in front of it. If yours is not in front of it, just switch it around in your hierarchy here. As mine is correct, I'm going to change mine back to white and leave it as is. So, now we're going to have to bind the text here to the quantity. So, go to your graph. In the event construct, you see quantity come out of here. We need to tie that to that text. So, click on the text. Go to the top, change its value here to quantity. Text and the tick is variable. Compile and then go to the graph. Now drag your quantity text variable out, which is get. From there, type in search for a set text. And the in text for this is going to come from the quantity in the slot contents. So drag that out and it automatically will add the two text integer node. 
hit compile and close that. So I'm going to walk over to our item, pick it up, go to our inventory tab, and there you go. There's our thumbnail with our text for our quantity. Now, because it's a stacking item, if I add another one into here, so if I just duplicate that out and I pick up both of them, they should stack. Ah, so here's an issue. It is stacking, but then it's still adding another one to it. So what's this all about? Let's see if we can fix this bug right now. So the issue is inside the inventory component when we do add to stack. On add to stack, we need to change this end bit here where we do the lock quantity remaining is less than or equal to zero. That's incorrect. We don't want to do it with the lock quantity remaining. We want to take it from the actual division of the uh, quantity. So from the total quantity, which is here, we're going to do divide by 99. So if we have less than 99, it's outputting zero, which is what we want. Um, so if it's higher than 99, it means there's some going to be left over. Therefore, we need to adjust it accordingly. So if we now drag that pin over to this instead, hit compile and test this out now. We'll go over both my items. And there they are in their slot. And that's it. And that's all it is for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to do rarity and change the color of these borders based on the rarity of the item that we're picking up. And in that episode, you can find out how to... No. And that'll do it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to tackle the rarity borders. So currently, they're all white around the border, but we're going to change that based on the rarity, whether they're common, uncommon, epic, rare, so on and so forth. Um, and we're going to go through that in the next episode. So if you want to watch that episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. For a donation of just $1, it gets you access to that video, plus many, many others before anyone else. So thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you're watching this and you have yet to subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, leave a comment below and I'll eager to see what you guys say. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys.